It's Reacher. Jack Reacher. Jack Reacher Never Go Back, directed by Edwards Wick, and of course is the sequel to the 2012 hit action movie uh, Jack Reacher, of course starring Tom Cruise as the title character. Now, Jack Reacher Never Go Back takes place four years after the events of the first movie, where Jack Reacher is now getting back into the military, and he uh, meets up with uh, this uh, girl, uh, Kobe Smunders, uh, who is accused of a crime she did not commit, so throughout the entire film he's trying to protect her and prove her innocence, while also discovering he has a 15-year-old daughter, unexpectedly, who is in grave danger. Now, a lot of people loved the original Jack Reacher, but I thought it was decent. It was alright. I, I wouldn't uh, call it the greatest movie any have made, but it was a fun popcorn action film with Tom Cruise, as they say. Uh, but Tom Cruise's performance was uh, outstanding. This is one of his best roles. So I understand why many were hyped uh, for uh, a sequel to that movie, uh, e even if I didn't particularly share the hype. So uh, how is this film in comparison to the original? Well, it's, it's meh. It's so disappointing and underwhelming. Uh, if it didn't have the name Jack Reach or Tom Cruise in it, this would be... Uh, nobody would remember it at all, but there are some legitimate redeeming qualities, like Tom Cruise's Jack Reach. Uh, he deserves a big round of applause because uh, the best moments in the film are where he's playing Jack Reach, a ruthless, uh, take no shit uh, character uh, like James Bond and Jason Bourne, and uh, he's lost none of his mojo since the first film. I love Tom Cruise in Edge of Tomorrow and War of the Worlds and Minority Report and uh, just give the guy an Oscar already. And Kobe Scummer, she really surprised me. She was absolutely fantastic as uh, the leading lady who had been falsely accused of a crime and uh, she and Tom Cruise had genuine bond and uh, you... They were uh, shared great moments together. Yeah, thank God she wasn't a damsel in distress as they usually cast the female characters. She was a strong woman and uh, didn't take any shit from her uh, male components in the military. And you really felt for her and wanted her name to be cleared. But I'm afraid that's all the good I found in this film. Because uh, this film has mediocre written all over it uh, from... The plot, which is so painfully predictable and boring, you can pretty much work out step by step what is going to happen. You know how it's going to be resolved, just like Jason Bourne. That was one of my main issues with the original Jack Reacher. It's supposed to be an action film, yet it didn't have many action scenes, and this film is no exception. The action scenes in this film are few and far between, so the pacing is pretty bad. Yeah, you'll find yourself nodding off and falling asleep uh, uh, most of the movie. Uh, but even when there was action, it was so uh, underwhelming and forgettable, lacking any uh, substance or any tension, and they were so poorly filmed. Uh, the action in the first Jack Reach, uh, as few as it was, it was great when it did happen. It had you on the edge of your seat, but... The action in this movie just makes you go, ah, wake me up when it's over. And uh, the villains in this film, terrible. Oh my gosh, they were completely silly. They lacked any threats. There wasn't any tension with them. They were complete cartoon characters. Uh, the villains in the first Jack Reacher uh, were great. Uh, there was a threat with them, but these villains complete step down. Now let's of course talk about uh, the daughter of Jack Reacher. Now I don't mind them introducing a daughter for Jack Reacher, providing they do something interesting with her, providing they have a genuine father and daughter bond, and they don't just make her somebody to be saved, but unfortunately they do nothing interesting with her. She only exists in this film to uh, get into trouble and for her dad just to save her all the time, whereas Bloodfather did it so much better. Uh, you never feel a bond between uh, uh, his this uh, father and daughter because they don't meet many times in the film at all, sadly, and that should have been a great focus of the film. Uh, uh, Jack Reacher should have actually known about his daughter from the beginning. They uh, 
uh, work, go on missions together and have great bands. Uh, that's my exact same flaw with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. How did Indy not know he had a son until uh, a bit later on in the movie? Uh, and how did Jack Reacher not know about his daughter? Oh, it's so stupid. To be honest, guys, if you uh, really want to see this movie, just uh, uh, buy it on Blu-ray, rent the DVD, see it on Netflix. I wouldn't recommend uh, paying any bucks to see it. So go and see OEG Origin of Evil instead, or even better yet, see Doctor Strange, which is just coming out. I see why this movie has a... 40% Rotten Tomato score, to be honest, I wasn't expecting much from it, and it gave me exactly what I expected. Uh, I'm not sure if they're ever going to make a third Jack Reacher if this film uh, bombs at the box office, but hopefully if they do do a third one, I uh, hope that's great. I hope uh, that redeems the, the series. I give Jack Reacher Never Go Back two stars out of five. What an interesting month with uh, OEG Origin of Evil actually being better than Jack Reacher 2, am I right? Well, I love you guys, thank you all for watching. What do you think of Jack Reacher Never Go Back? Please comment, let me know. Please like this video and subscribe. Please follow me on Twitter and on Google+. And I'll see you all next time. Bye guys.